you're sitting in your ground floor flat. You get the call to evacuate. You've got half an hour to get everything that means anything to you, to put it in a rucksack and to get out. You're sitting in your terraced house. You only moved in six days ago. It was a new start. You get the call saying you've got to get out. So you throw your children and everything that matters into your car and you drive away. You're on a farm and your husband and your sons are out moving the animals. You're safe because you're at the top of the hill in the farmhouse, but you can't see your husband or your sons. And all you can see is the water rising and the horses are up to their necks already. You're on holiday with a young baby and the water's rising and the emergency services say, get yourself into the attic. We're going to lift you out by helicopter. You're in your car and you're driving down the A591 through the middle of the lakes, trying to go home in a flood. There's a landslide in front of you. So you turn the car around, you try to retrace your steps. There's a landslide behind you. You're trapped. You're warm and dry in your village home but the beck outside your house has become a raging torrent and your only way out by foot or by car has been swept away. The bridge is gone. You're marooned. You're upstairs in your house. You've managed to move everything that matters to the first floor. You've got your family, you've got your pets, but the water is four foot deep downstairs and your only way out is by boat. On the weekend of the 5th of December 2015, Storm Desmond hit Cumbria and it was the worst storm that the county has ever seen. Citizen reporting via social media allowed us all to watch the disaster unfold. Community after community watched their flood defences fail. They were unable to hold back the river. Thousands of homes and businesses were deluged by water. The sharing of photos and film in real time became a focus for what was happening. That's the flood defences in Keswick. All we could do was watch the water rise. My social media newsfeed became a focus for sharing reliable information about what was happening. But it also became a signpost for who needed help, either practically or emotionally. While the rain was still falling, Cumbria Community Foundation decided to launch a disaster appeal to help the people who were affected. The initial target was to raise one million pounds. The scale of the damage was not yet known. The only thing that we knew for sure is that people were going to need financial help to recover. You don't always need to know how bad something is going to be before you decide how you might put it right. So although I've been watching everybody else's social media feeds and I could see what was happening, I sort of needed to go and see how bad it was to understand kind of how we were going to harness this appeal. I needed to go out and I needed to experience what was happening. So with my husband and my sons, did the responsible thing and took them for a walk down a disused railway line in the worst storm we'd ever seen. Although we were high above the river, if you know the old railway line near Keswick, we were walking ankle deep in water. As we reached Keswick, all the roads in and all the roads out were flooded. The multi-million pound flood defences had failed. The park was waist deep in water. The town's two supermarkets and many businesses were flooded. So while I was out getting my first hand experience, the rest of the team were doing everything that needed to happen before the launch. Everything was in place. The necessary charity paperwork, the permission from the trustees, the just giving page, the web content, everything that we needed to launch was in place. I'd already drafted the press release before my walk. And by half past eight on the 5th of December, I sent the press release to every media contact I had ever made and set about getting it into every news bulletin we could. 
I shared my photos and film footage from this walk and details of how people could donate. I shared other people's images as the scale of the disaster unfolded. The appeal gathered momentum. Local news organisations carried our appeal in their broadcasts and online. And I don't think the small team at Cumbria Community Foundation slept that night or for many, many nights ahead. We were constantly checking stories of what was happening and where it was happening and how people had been affected and sharing them. So the next morning, my husband went out on his bike, all the roads are closed, um, to see what damage had been done to where we'd been the day before. He captured a tree falling in a landslide into the river. The same river we walked down just the day before. The biggest shock? Both of the bridges that we had crossed less than 24 hours before had been swept away. Bridges that were made of stone and steel and had stood for over 100 years and carried trains when the railway line was open were washed away. When he came back with his pictures and we saw what happened in Carlisle and Appleby and Glenridding and Kendall and lots of other places across the county, we knew we had to do more because this was worse than 2005 and 2009 put together. I shared the images he captured. The bridge photo was shared 500 times on my Twitter feed and it reached something like 300 and something thousand on Facebook. On mine alone, at the time people were using your stuff so it was shared in other ways but the only ones I can count are mine. But it wasn't enough to rely on this small county of half a million people to help us get out of the mess we were in. We needed national attention to help us with our appeal. So we contacted everybody we could think of on social media. We tried to get hold of people in power, like our MPs, the Prime Minister. I walked back into Keswick to find the satellite trucks to go and offer interviews to say, we've got this appeal to help the people who are affected by the stories that you're covering. And every time there was a piece on the news in those early days about the floods, there was a piece about our appeal and how people could donate. We were overwhelmed in the first 48 hours to see £100,000 donated, mainly through the power of social media. And if you pay attention to the next slide, you're going to see two weeks of giving on Just Giving in six seconds. So how do you keep the momentum going? You need to keep telling stories. You need to keep sharing people's experiences. To find the stories, you've got to go out and talk to people, to take a little storytelling device and to share it and to keep sharing it. You've got to get people's permission to share it. Because sometimes you get a cracking story and they don't want to share it. This guy, swimming in his kitchen, didn't mind. I had my work cut out. Um, my role with Cumbria Community Foundation is usually very part-time and freelance, and suddenly it became all-consuming. But there was something else bothering me. I was hearing stories of little old ladies in Keswick who were walking from their house all the way around the town to go and buy bread or milk in supermarkets that were no longer open. And I knew that when they got into Keswick they were going to find this or this. Small shops that were still open couldn't keep up with the demand. Ironically, at home I had no water and nor did hundreds of other houses in and around Keswick because the water main had gone. So there were lots of people hungry, there was lots of people thirsty with no water supply. But it was not my problem. It wasn't my problem, but we needed an emergency food bank. Keswick doesn't normally have a food bank, but we needed an emergency food bank. So I put a shout out on Facebook saying, we need a food bank, who's got a room? And bearing in mind most people were flooded and everybody wanted every room that was going. Uh, it was tricky. But within hours, the Keswick Convention Centre came back to us and said, we've got your room. 
So we had a room, but we had no food. So I put another shout on Facebook going, we need food. Can you empty your kitchen cupboards? Can you bring what you've got that won't perish? And we'll give it to people who need it. And so began Keswick Food Bank. The connectors appeared, the people who care, the people who had other things to do. They had jobs to do, they had families to look after, but they came and they offered what they had, whether it was time, food or goods. But here's what, where the magic happened, because what I'm about to describe didn't just happen in our little community, it happened in every flood affected community in the UK. We have a saying in Cumbria Community Foundation that we connect people who care with causes that matter. What happened next was that people who cared came forward and they took on the voluntary roles that mattered. Some belonged to faith groups, some were the Lions, Rotarians, the WI. But many were just selfless individuals who wanted to do something to help. My friend Claire, who you can probably see wearing a nice, attractive, bright yellow thing in the middle of the picture, she agreed to go and set up the food bank while I did some radio interviews. She said she had two hours. Two weeks later, when we closed the food bank, she had been there every single hour of every single day. She made the right call though when we realised we needed a clothes bank, that we didn't have room in there to have a clothes bank. But then more connectors appeared and a clothes bank opened somewhere else in town. People started offering us Christmas trees. We were two weeks away from Christmas. They were offering us presents for children for Christmas and we had no room. Other connectors appeared and they sorted out the Christmas trees and they sorted out the presents. In the town hall where all the official agencies were, so all the police, the army, the fire, the army, everybody else, they were coordinating other connectors, other volunteers, who turned up day after day in wellies and waterproofs and went and shoveled muck and cleaned out people's houses and stripped out carpets for days. A few men turned up from the Alim Dad Foundation in Blackburn in the immediate aftermath with goodie bags and were handing them out to people in the street. They came back later en masse with other people from their mosque and helped Keswick to clean up after the floods. There was a Sikh charity called Calcerade who came with the very much needed bottles of water. The food bank worked because in the early hours, local people just turned up with what they could. We had a teenage boy who brought tins that he'd bought from the spa with his own pocket money. We had the dentist who arrived with hundreds of toothbrushes and toothpaste to give away. And once we'd exhausted the community and their kitchen cupboards, the local food supply companies in this county came forward and started giving us food. Then the national supermarket started and lorry loads of food started arriving. We handled £50,000 worth of food in two weeks. But there were a few people who were so kind and so selfless. You sort of expect your community to pull together. But when people from outside come in and they're not looking for any recognition, they're certainly not expecting to be in this, and they're not looking for any thanks, that's something really special. This couple arrived from Merseyside, they're the ones on either side, with a boot full of bags. They'd been to a national supermarket, they had filled their car and came in with bags and bags of stuff. This lady brought fresh cream cakes from Yorkshire. She's a baker, she made them herself. She just rocked up at the food bank and said, here, bootload of cream cakes. And then when we tried to give the cream cakes away, people said, oh, could I just have a slice or a quarter? Because there's only however many of us in the house. We don't want a whole cake, give some to somebody else. And trying to persuade people to take a whole cake was one of the biggest tasks of the day. There was very much excitement on day five when this man arrived from Stockport with a lorry load of bread. It was the first fresh bread we had in the food bank. It was the end of the non-perishable goods. And then this couple turned up from Staffordshire in their four by four and said, can we help you deliver the food? And they went out, bless them, for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, even the wrong direction when I got them completely lost and kept coming back and filling the car and taking it out and giving it to people whose houses were flooded, who'd lost everything 
to help them. 60 ex-servicemen and women from an organisation called Team Rubicon came to Keswick and worked alongside faith groups from all over Lancashire. There were so many random acts of kindness and our food bank became not just a source of food and cleaning products, but a warm welcome, a listening ear and a hug for anybody who wanted one. People's Connections helped us make a million pounds in five days. And then the target went up from one million to three million. The UK government agreed to match fund what the charity could raise. Two national newspapers agreed to help bring attention to our appeal. I'm not responsible for the headline. And businesses, charities and individuals all over the UK started to organise events to raise money for the appeal. Some famous faces put on shows across the county to raise money. The singer James Bay gave us permission to use the song Hold Back the River for a lip sync video, which is available on YouTube, certainly till the end of this year. Locally, our media were super, super supportive and they ran stories of the people who we had helped and the grants that were given. They shared the big milestones, like when we raised four million pounds in four weeks. There was one story which wove its way through the appeal for me. This is Keith. His ground floor flat is by the river. In 2005, when his flat flooded, it was ankle deep. In 2009, it was waist deep. And as you can see from this picture, in 2015, the water level rose so high that if he had not escaped on that first night with his rucksack balanced on his legs, he would have drowned. I first met him when he came into the food bank, not looking for food. He was looking for wet wipes. His hands and his wheelchair were covered in silt. And he knew that back in 2009, when he got covered in silt, it was contaminated with sewage and he got really ill. So he just wanted to keep his hands clean. I offered to wash down his wheelchair because it was absolutely caked. And he said, there's no point. I've got to wheel myself back through Keswick to meet the insurance assessor who doesn't turn up. They had a lot of people to see, but he wheeled himself back and forth day in, day out, waiting for somebody who didn't arrive, covered in silt. It just so happened that the Sun newspaper were at the food bank when he came in and they'd brought a team of cleaners and he was happy to share their story with them. But I was quite upset that for the third time in a decade that he had lost absolutely everything. So I basically put out a shout on Facebook saying I needed some waterproofs and some clothes and a pair of medium size shoes, he didn't know what size his feet were, uh, for a man in a wheelchair. And could anybody help? And within an hour, this man turned up with a full set of waterproofs, with dry, warm clothes that you would wear under those waterproofs. And in fact, the gilet off one of his members of staff's back who couldn't bear the idea that there was somebody who had nothing. My friend Simon May went out in Keswick and basically managed to get another high street outdoor shop to donate a pair of trainers. So from head to toe, he had something dry because one of the things that bothered me was that he was soaking wet and dirty when he came in. And if you can imagine, you've lost everything. And one of the things you need is something warm and dry when you get home at night. So six months later, thanks to some support from the charity and a lot of support from other people in the community, Keith is back home. Cumbria Community Foundation has raised £10 million to help this county get back on its feet. So far, more than £5 million has been given out in grants to help those who've been affected. Compare this with 2009, when £3 million was raised and given away. So what was the difference? Yes, it was a bigger disaster. Yes, it needed a bigger response. But the people connectors were already there in 2009. So what made the difference? 
I think it was the online connection, the fact that we could all talk to each other and we could see who needed what and people stepped up and they gave what they could when it was needed. Even those people who were cynical about the use of social media saw the benefits and embraced it during those floods. Our community connectors harness the power of the World Wide Web. None volunteered for glory. Hundreds of people from across Cumbria were invited to Downing Street in recognition of what they had done during the floods. I would say every single person in that room would have brought another hundred people who also deserved to be there. The thing the connectors have in common is that they were selfless and they were modest. They helped because they could and they would do it again tomorrow in a heartbeat.